Hi, I'm Brett from PaperCartridges.com, and I'm here today at the shop in beautiful downtown Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. And we're going to talk about why most Civil War bullets have these grooves on them. Uh, you're probably familiar with the, the mini ball, the most common uh, bullet of the Civil War that was fired from rifle muskets and other weapons. But have you ever wondered why they usually have these three grooves around the cylindrical base of the bullet? Um, and some of you probably already have an answer. You're going to say, oh, duh, they're, they're the lube grooves. Those are where you put the grease that's needed for shooting a black powder rifle. It uh, keeps your fouling soft and keeps your barrel clean. And uh, in fact, a lot of people call them <laughs> lube grooves for that reason today. And technically that's really not why these rings or grooves are in civil war bullets you might be surprised to know that the original reason for these grooves has nothing to do with lubricant at all um, so to explain how the grooves got on the bullet we got to go back uh, about 20 years before the start of the american civil war we got to go back to france in the late 1830s early 1840s and the French in this period are the ones coming out with new military technology, a lot of new developments in the 1800s coming out of France. You know, the rifle, uh, smokeless powder, the, the mini ball, obviously, a lot of things in, in rapid progression. And uh, even before Claude Meunier invents his famous mini ball, the French already have a form of rifle, uh, the carabine à tige, which uh, is a primitive rifle. Uh, and the bullets that they were using for this gun had one groove in them. And the only reason they had a groove at all was the string of the cartridge paper was tied around the bullet at that point. And that groove served as a nice notch to tie the string off. Um, you got to keep in mind, 1840s, this is very early in rifle development. And this bullet that the French adopted for the carabine tige is one of the very first of the modern we call like bullet shaped projectiles instead of a round musket ball. So this is very new. One of the instructors at the French Army's School of Rifle Training at uh, Vissan was uh, Captain Francois Laurent Alphonse Tamiger and he was a really groovy guy. Okay, I promise. That's the last I'll do of that. <laughs> but he was experimenting with bullet designs, and he proposed an updated cartridge for the carabine tige that got rid of the string, kind of modernized it, took the groove out of a bullet, and it was a more modern cartridge design. And oddly enough, the old bullet that had that redundant groove in it shot better than the new bullet. And Captain Tamiget studied this phenomenon and he realized that the groove at the base of the old bullet was helping to stabilize the bullet by keeping it aligned along the axis of flight. And at the end of a lot of experiments, uh, Tamiget proposed a new form of bullet, and that's the one that we're familiar with where there's three grooves around the cylindrical portion of the base. And these bullets shot much more accurately than the same style of bullet without any grooves. And to explain this, uh, Captain Tamiget himself used the combined analogy of a spinning top and the feathers, uh, the fletching on the back of an arrow to explain how his grooves work. So imagine a bullet shot from a rifle spins along its axis from, from the rifle. And so it's like a spinning top. And that same rotational force that keeps a bullet stable also keeps a top balanced. It prevents the top from falling over. It prevents the bullet from tumbling head over heels, which is what it would do if, that, if the spin isn't enough to keep it stabilized. And if you get keyholes in your target, that's what's happening is your bullet isn't going forward stable around its axis. It's lost its stability and it's now tumbling head over heels. So if a bullet or a spinning top, if it starts to wobble, 
that wobble isn't going to go away. It usually will get worse, and then the top will slow down and fall over, and then the bullet will start to tumble. Um, now think of an arrow. It's kind of like an elongated bullet. It's got a heavy arrowhead at the front, and then you've got the feathers in the back. Uh, that arrows don't really spin fast enough to stabilize them like a rifle bullet, but the feathers that are at the back of the arrow cause enough drag that if the, the heavier nose of the arrow wants to tip down and fall, the wind resistance on the feathers at the back lift it back up. So Tamije explained his grooves using the, the spinning top and feathers on an arrow analogy that the grooves on the bullet are causing resistance to the air and they prevent the bullet from wobbling. And if it does wobble a little bit, the, the grooves will help realign it back onto its true course. The Tommy J's bullet, it's, it's like a, a bullet that has feathers. Uh, <laughs> the grooves cause the resistance to the air and prevent the bullet from wobbling. Or if it does start to wobble, then at least the grooves will help reduce its severity. And Tamije found that the best shape of the grooves is a, a chamfer groove with a flat right angle facing the wind. So as long as the bullet is flying straight and the, the slipstream of the wind is just flying over the top of the grooves, there's, there's really no drag. But if the bullet does begin to wobble, It'll either lift or lower the grooves into the slipstream of the air, and the air will cause drag, and it will immediately push the bullet, self-correct it back into its proper trajectory. Um, otherwise, if it started to wobble, that wobble would just get terminally worse uh, until you keyhole. Um, so his grooves, really, it's, it, they're super simple and they provided a much greater amount of accuracy out of a black powder rifle musket. And that's, that's simply the reason why almost every rifle bullet in the American Civil War has these grooves on them. Uh, now in Europe, rifle musket bullets were almost always shot with a paper patch. So the bullet was wrapped in paper, uh, and the grease and the lubricant uh, was on the outside of the paper. But in the 1850s, the United States Army, when we're researching what new rifle musket we want to adopt, uh, officers of the Ordnance Department decided to eliminate the paper patch for a number of reasons. Uh, but they found, just as a happy coincidence, so this is already 10 years after Tommy J had applied his grooves, the, the ordnance officers were delighted to find that these groups also form a very convenient reservoir for putting the lubricant uh, onto the bullet, which again is not loaded with any kind of a lubricated paper patch. Uh, so technically, yes, you can say that the grooves in Civil War bullets are for holding lubricant, but that really isn't their original or their most significant function. So there's going to be some of you that are probably shouting at your screen right now saying like, uh, okay, smart bullet nerd guy, how come modern bullets don't have grooves uh, and, and shoot very well? And the simple reason is that modern bullets spin much, much faster than a, uh, a rifle musket bullet. So for example, the U.S. Model 1861 Springfield rifle musket the rifling grooves in that barrel made one complete twist in six feet. It didn't even create a half turn in the entire length of the barrel. And you had to have that because of the large caliber, heavy, slow, muzzle-loading bullets that you're using. That slow rifling worked best. In a modern rifle, let's just take the M16, it completes one twist every seven inches. So rifle musket, one turn in six feet, M16, a modern rifle, one turn in seven inches. So that modern bullet is spinning so quickly, it doesn't need any grooves to keep it stabilized. And if you put grooves on it, you're actually going to make things a lot worse by adding a lot of uh, unnecessary drag. So that's the reason why bullets today, you won't find them with, uh, with Capitaine Tamije's grooves, but 
Civil War bullets? You did. So hopefully that was useful to you and not, uh, not too boring. Um, thanks for watching. Appreciate it if you like and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you next time.